Well, it's Tuesday, the second day of the last week of our Lord's uh, time on earth. Uh, here it is, Tuesday. Maybe you're feeling overwhelmed with the fight to see God's will done in your life today. We all need others to help and engage in the fight for spiritual warfare with us and on our behalf. You know, you're not in this alone. You know, uh, it's amazing to me when Elijah uh, gets to feel sorry for himself and the Lord says, you're not alone. There's a remnant of people that have stayed faithful to me. What has carried the, the, the gospel in the New Testament and what has carried the word of God in the Old Testament has always been God has always had a remnant of people. No matter what was happening in the world and no matter what was happening around them, there were uh, certain people that stayed faithful to the word of God. And that is true in all times and places. And, you know, sometimes we just need reminded of that. And I think Moses needs reminded of that. Here he is. Yesterday we talked about the fact that, you know, it's so easy to get into that let somebody else do it mentality. I can't do it. I don't deserve to be considered for this. Uh, I can't do it. And all the other excuses we have. Well, you know what? God did. He short-circuited all of Moses' excuses he was making about not being an eloquent speaker, about maybe stuttering, not being able to even communicate with his people because he hadn't been raised with them. And he says, I'm sending your brother to help you. And it's so easy to get discouraged when we think we are in this battle we call life all by ourselves. He'd been out in that desert. He'd been out battling people. He'd been in the midst of, of people that didn't believe the way he did and didn't believe in the one true living God. And he'd married into that family and, and even his father-in-law and all those uh, constantly fighting, you know, and, and all because he, had, in a moment of temptation, had done the wrong thing uh, as when one of his, uh, one of his Hebrew uh, uh, friends, well, maybe not even friends, but tribesmen were being uh, abused. Moses needed to know that he was not alone in the battle to get God's will done in the freeing of the Hebrews. He wasn't going to have to do this alone. You know, even when God's with us, and we know God's with us, and we're communicating with God, we just need another human being to have contact with, somebody to care about, somebody that we can talk to, and somebody that we can, we can get in the harness with and pull. So God sends his own brother to help him. Here it is. You ready? Exodus 14, or 4, 14, and 17. When the anger of the Lord burned against Moses, and he said, Is there not your brother Aaron, the Levite? I know that he speaks fluently. And moreover, behold, he is coming to meet you. When he sees you, he will be glad in his heart. And you are to speak to him and put the words in his mouth. And I, even I, will be with your mouth and his mouth. And I will teach you what you are to do. Moreover, he shall speak for you to the people, and it shall come about that he shall be as a mouth for you, and you shall be as God is to him. And you shall take in your hand the staff which you shall perform the signs. Isn't that great? What's he saying? I'm sending you help. I'm sending your own brother. Oh, man, how that must have lit uh, Moses' heart on fire. He hasn't seen his family for 40 years. His brother's coming to meet him. And you know, he's probably thinking to himself, how much did my family have to suffer because I had a moment where I lost my temper and I got angry and I reacted in the wrong way. There's no telling how his brother had been mistreated because of Moses' sin and because of Moses' breakdown. Now God's sending Aaron out and they're going to be reunited and God is going to use the two of them together, supporting each other walking side by side with God in between them. We see in the New Testament that God knows that we all need others to help us. Now here it is in the New Testament, not just the Old Testament, but the New Testament. In Luke 10, 1, Now after this the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them two by two ahead for him to every city and place where he himself was going to come. Why did he send them two by two? To support each other, to support each other. Boy, I tell you what, we often use the book of Ruth for marriage, but the book of Ruth was not about marriage. It was a mother-in-law and a daughter-in-law. And it says, where two split the load, the load is halved. You may need that. Seek someone out that is a Christian, that is a believer like you. Seek them out. Let them help you. One of the hardest things in the world for us to do is to let others help us. Even Jesus used his uh, apostles 
Even on the triumphal entry, they had to go in and get the donkey and bring it back to him. He sent them off to get a place to secure the Lord's Supper for the Passover on the last week. Someone's needing you to help them or you're needing to get help. Maybe it's both ways. You know, most of the time it's both ways. We get help and we give help. Maybe that's why the Lord gave you the wonderful spouse he gave you like he did me. The Lord load is halved. Let someone help you. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, send those we need to help us and let us be open enough and let us be sensitive enough, but above all, let us put pride aside and accept the help from others that we need. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.